Hi and welcome to Interspace Labs. My name's Stephen Ball and I'm going to be taking you through this introduction to ISQL. Before we get started, I'd like to point you to a very valuable resource, docs.embarcadero.com forward slash products forward slash Interspace. Interspace is probably the most documented product that Embarcadero has and every single update and major and minor versions have got their own section of documentation on the Interbase page. So if you have a look specifically at the operations guide and the language reference, they will really set you in good stead in terms of getting going with ISQL and the general tools and language features of Interbase. Now before we actually open up ISQL, it's worth just remembering that Interbase is a true cross-platform database running on Windows, Mac, Linux and Solaris. And having that functionality across multiple platforms, we have the same commands that you can use on each platform. So what you learn on one platform is relevant to the others. Bearing that in mind, we're going to start off by looking at Interbase today running on the Mac. So here we are on that um, docs.embarcadero page and you can see there's quite a lot on here, all the way down to 7.5 upwards. And if we go and have a look, I've opened up, this is the operations guide. And we can see under chapter 11, interactive query, there's an awful lot here to help you get going, and including a really good command reference um, set uh, and uh, notes on the command tools and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a few of these options just to kind of get going, but do refer to the documentation because there's an absolute wealth of information in there. So we're going to start with the terminal window and I'm going to launch the ISQL program from Applications Interface Bin ISQL. Now the first thing we'll need to do is we'll be asked to connect and you'll be able to see that we've actually got ISQL running here because it's got this little SQL cursor asking us for a data to be entered. So I'm just going to put connect and let's just do applications interface examples employee.gdb and you need to put the semicolon at the end just to finish the command. And we're now connected. We've got returned back that we're now connected to the database. So from here, we can use any number of the commands that we have available to us. For example, we'll show tables, show table, let's have a look at the job table. So we can see the different fields, the field types, any check constraints that are against the fields. We can see any references that are going on in here. So we have a foreign key reference that references the country table on the, con on the country field and so on. Now we also have the employee table so we could do select star from employee and use some SQL. And you can see this will now return us back some data. In fact, let's just maximize this so we can see more of the data. And you can see this is paging the results. So every page will then we'll get a new header. So we, as we scroll down, we can see what is in what location. However, if we don't actually want to see that, what we can do is we just quit out of ISQL quickly. We can relaunch ISQL with this minus page parameter. And I'm just going to set that to a thousand. So after a thousand records, it will change the page to show the headers again. Obviously, you can put that at whatever value you like. But if we connect in and let's run the same script again, select star from employee. Now 
you can now see that the data has come out with only one set of headers because we've not hit that thousand records. Now this is kind of useful, especially if we want to start running text out to files. So for example, we could do here output and let's go create a file called application interface examples and we'll just call this output.txt and now we've set up the output we can say well let's select star from employee and let's select count from employee And once we're finished running out to file, then we just type output again, and that will now return us back to normal state. So if we do, let's just do select count from employee again, we can see we now get the output coming back to us our running session. So let's go and find that van at file that we just created. So if we have a look in the examples folder, we can see here we have an output and at the top we have the first set of data and then underneath it we have the count um, 42 records. Okay, this is quite useful, but sometimes you actually want to see what script you run. So you can get that to come out by using the echo command. So let's quit out and we'll just relaunch using our minus page again, but we can also use minus E for echo or echo. You can type as much or as little as you want, it'll just pick up from the minus E. So again, let's try and um, if we ran this through, we'd get the output, but with the commands. Now, I've actually already written something that I want to show you. And that's um, a text file in here. Just remember where I put it. Called test script. Now, test script runs the same commands that we've just done out to file. So it connects to the database, it sets the output folder this time, or the output file, this time we we'll call it employee.txt so we can see the difference. We've then got select star from employees, select the count and then output to return us back. Now using that script we can literally just type here input and then type in the file name or if we're lazy we can just drag and drop this script name in and just hit enter. Now you'll notice because I forgot to put the semicolon on we got a continuation so you can have an SQL statement over multiple lines um, but by putting the semicolon on it ends the, the SQL statement and executes. So because we've got the echo running we then see our command echoed and then the following commands run. And if I type exit, that will close us out of our session. And we should now be able to go and find our employee.txt. So here we have our employee.txt file. And we can see that our echo has shown the select star from employee and the select count from employee before those statements are run. Okay, so just to finish off, there's one last command that I'd like to show you. And we can see above here from our previous statement that when we select everything from employees table, we get a table running across the uh, the screen. Now we can set list which is a nice QR command and then if we do select star from 
employees again. We can now see that our list goes down rather than across. So each record is printed out vertically rather than horizontally. To revert back, then we can just set list again, and that will revert us back. Now we can also type help set, and we can get a list of commands that we can use with set in our ISQR session. So for example, we could set SQR dialect to 1. And we can see here we're getting a warning client SQL dialect has been set to 1 when connecting to database SQL dialect 3 database. So Interbase will try to help you out where it can, but it is possible sometimes you might need to connect to a previous version of an SQL dialect. So there's the option to do that within there. And we can see here we get a warning that we've set to a dialect that doesn't match the database. So let's just set that back. We can also set stats, so if we now do select star from employee, we now get a number of stats appear with our query. And to set those back, again, just set stats, and that will now turn those back off. All these commands plus more are available through the ISQL window, so do the ISQL help, so do go ahead and have a look at those. Anyway, that brings me to the end of our quick introduction to ISQL today. Just to finish off, we're just going to pull up our Windows VM here and just show you that the ISQL program here is located on Embarcadero Interbase Bin and it's there for you to go and use and run and it brings up the same thing um, for you to type in. The key thing with Windows is you will need to use the minus user, minus pass to put in the username and password to connect to a database as Windows doesn't have the same auto-authentication that Unix-based systems have. Anyway, that really is it now, so thank you for watching and see you back next time.